Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we're going to be in the pursuit of Slack once again. This time, a review of the official Slackware 15.0 right after this. Slackware is, you probably know, is one of the oldest surviving distros of Linux. And so that, it, it does deserve kind of a discussion all in its own. So I, I think probably the first place to start is Slackware Linux 15.0 was released February the 3rd, 2022. It's been a long time, six years since the last major release. Uh, and there's also Slackware Linux 15.0 for ARM, but looks like this is still under active development. So they have released a number of pieces like the ARM 32-bit. So if you're on an ARM ver version 7A or higher, usually it's version 7L. But if you're on those architectures, you can run it. There are other architectures in the works. So yeah, and, uh, and of course the team lead and co-founder is the benevolent dictator back to Patrick Volk, Volkering. And, uh, and he has been in that position since, I believe, since the beginning. He is the co-founder. Some highlights about Slackware 15.0 is it's based on Linux LTS version 15.15.19. Now, it's possible that by the, you know, between the release notes and when we install it today, there may be a difference in the version of the kernel. So there are always two versions of the kernel that's supplied with Slackware. There's the generic version and the huge version. Uh, those contain different items, different drivers that are necessary for it. So today we're going to be using the huge version. The installer automatically makes an init RD for you. Now this is not a system D based system. Slackware looks more like Unix than it does like Linux. I mean, it at least the modern Linux. It it is it is really a stripped down, no nonsense uh, release of Linux. That it, I would say that you know if you if you're looking to really understand what's going on inside of Linux and you really want to learn more about the internals, you certainly can go to Arch. But if you want one that is stable and that shows you kind of where think, where the roots of Linux lie, Slackware is really the place to go for that. I mean, you'll find more similarities between Slackware and BSD Unix than you will, be, I and mean, this is just my opinion, Slackware and one of the modern versions of Linux today. And things have changed quite a bit. So... The Slackware does support 32-bit mode. They have not removed it from their uh, from their versions. It supports both single uh, processor and multiple processor or SMP uh, kernels. So if you have a if you have a multiple CPU or if you even have an old Pentium, that it will run. So yeah, uh, the latest kernel branch currently 5.16 is in testing, and that's in the source directory. If you want that. Um, it supports UEFI hardware uh, on the x86-64 Slackware edition only. It, obviously, it's not going to support it for ARM. ARM uses U-Boot uh, for its manager for bringing systems up, so it doesn't have a BIOS. At least not none of the ARM machines that I have behind me have a BIOS. They have a bootloader. So the package support for UEFI includes eLilo, which is an enhanced Lilo, uh, that is the predecessor to Grub, and there was one even previous to Lilo. But eLilo uh, provides support for UEFI. The standard Lilo does not. Grub 2, of course, is available, and you can use EFI Boot Manager if you wish. There are instructions on the site and their documentation pages to do that if you wish. Uh, if you are configured for uh, UEFI, you will get the option to install eLilo, but not Grub. So, yeah, that's a manual installation for Grub2. Uh, what's the difference? So, Lilo dates back to a time where we didn't have dual boot. We, we just didn't have the resources on the machine to do that. So, 
it does not support dual boot. It also, so in other words, I can't put this on the same disk as Windows. Also, it doesn't support network boot. So if I want to be able to boot from a network server, I can't do that with Lilo. It never had that capability. Uh, at least in my in my, in my uh, experience, it didn't. Now, it's possible that there are some things that have been added since, but uh, originally it did not. That was the reason why Grub came along, was to fix those issues. Uh, you can use a USB stick option if you prefer. There used to be a floppy disk option, too, as I remember. Uh, I have a funny story with that, but I think I'll reserve that one for another time. So Slack or ISO files can be burnt either to a DVD or a USB stick. So they are they are configured to allow you to actually boot from those either a DVD or a USB stick if you wish. Sadly, Slack where where team lost two of their members in 2020. Eric uh, Jan Trump or Alpha Geek is uh, one of those. He's kind of he was kind of the tickle expert. At TCL, for those of you who don't know, uh, Tickle is the way AT&T pronounced it. So uh, you may hear it as TCL. It's a programming scripting language that is very powerful. He was kind of the expert in TCL programming. They also lost their other co-founder, Brett Pearson. Um, so, yeah, sad year for last year. Slackware Linux, of course, is open source, and it began in July of 1993. Slackware Linux originally was based off Soft Landings Linux system, SLS Linux. I believe I've talked about that before, but they have since, SLS is gone, they're long gone. There was a lot of forks from Slackware, one of the originally formed base distribution, one of the originals of Slackware formed the basis of SUSE Linux, it doesn't anymore. Slackware is more Unix-like than it is Linux-like. So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, it's available for IA32 and x86-64 architectures. There's also an ARM-based version. The design philosophy of Slackware follows the design philosophy for Unix, the original AT&T Bell Labs Linux. It's oriented towards simplicity and software purity. So... Where the heck did Slackware get its name? Well, it's it's actually paying homage to J.R. Uh, Dobbs, or Bob Dobbs, who was a cartoon character, and it's a parody of a religion called the Church of the Subgenus. So I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll, take a, I'll take a pause here, and we'll do an installation of Slackware and a little bit of a demo, and I'll be right back. And we'll make this a little bigger so you can read it. If you have any parameters that you're trying to pass to the Linux kernel, you can do that here. I don't have anything special I need to do, so I'm just going to go ahead and boot in. And I'll wait for it to come up, and I'll have to, because it refreshed the screen, I'm going to have to grab it again. At this point, it offers me the, the opportunity to change my keyboard if I want, and I don't have anything special I need to do here. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in as root. There is no password. And the first thing I'll need to do is to partition my, my, my drive. So I'm going to go ahead and use CF disk. And I'm going to go ahead and do a DOS partition. And we'll go ahead and do a new. It's going to be a 2 gig. This is my swap. So I'll put it on primary. And we'll need to change the type to swap for that. And then I'll need to uh, create another partition. I'm going to make this uh, 20 gig. This will be my home partition. And type is correct, and we need to make it bootable. And then I'll come down and configure the remaining. This will be for home. And I think I'm done here, so I'm going to go ahead and write this out. And you do have to type yes. And then it should say that the partition table has been altered. And at this point, I am done, so I can quit. If you want to do a check, I just do this. I mean, it's fdisk L. And then it'll confirm that you have the partition set up the way you want. Now, <clears throat> I typically, when I'm doing swap, I usually put it later in the... Partitions in the old days that you used to move the swap up because 
memory was tight usually and usually ended up running in SWAT more often. So you, on a rotational drive, you wanted those sectors at the front of the disc because it took less time for the heads to reach those than it did to, to have the heads slew all the way across the platter. But with uh, SSDs, it's kind of a meaningless uh, uh, time saver. So, All right, so I'm going to do a setup now. And I, I can... I want to go down here and set up my swap partition, so I will collect. I'll select that, and it'll offer me a chance to check for bad blocks. I don't need to do that. Again, that's a holdover from the older style rotational media that probably dates back to IDE and some of those older uh, <laughs> PADA style drives. So I'm going to select this partition as my Linux partition and I'll format it as the XT4. If I'm going to be using Lilo today for my bootloader, but and Lilo does not like XFS, so <laughs> save yourself some time. Uh, and then this one, more than one tag disk type, you can may use to distribute your Linux across more than one. Currently you have mounted as your slash. You might want to mount directories such as home. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that one's slash. This one I need to mark. I'm also going to make that one EXT, and it's going to be slash home. So that's what I have set up for my partitions. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and install from the CD. We're going to select auto scan to pull off the, the information that's here. Now, you could just let this go. I mean, it's don't need that either. So... I'm just going to trim mine back a ways. I'm going to select terse mode. Now I could go ahead uh, and say, ooh, well, maybe I'll install everything. So they do recommend that. The reason for it is, is that this will save you time and, and pain later. One of the things that you'll find is that in most of the modern package managers, uh, for better or for worse, <laughs> they will actually check what the dependencies are for a particular package that you're installing, and then they'll go ahead and do that. So the reason why they're recommending this is because Slackware's package manager does not do that. So yeah, it's uh, you have to know the dependencies ahead of time and have those installed. So that's the reason why they are recommending this. So, uh, and I could do that. I can, we can go ahead and do that and select everything. And then it'll go through one by one here so it's now doing configuration uh, information on all the packages that are there. So, uh, so <laughs> you can boot your machine from a USB device, but if you want to have it boot from a USB stick, you can certainly do that. And next we want Lilo. I'm just going to do a simple install. Frame buffer console, that's fine. I'm just going to use the standard. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have any I don't have any special parameters that I need. I I have a DOS partition a DOS uh, labeled uh, drive, so I am going to install Lilo to the MBR. I have a USB connected mouse, so I'm going to do that. And then these are the drivers that you need uh, to allow you to cut and paste. So yes, yeah, so I want to configure my network, and we will call it Slackware. And I'll put in my domain name. And I don't need a VLAN. <clears throat> I am going to go ahead and let Network Manager figure it out. And at this point, I can choose what services I want. So uh, if, you, if you have a printer, you will want cups. If you want to run the DNS mask server, you can do that. I'm not going to do that. If you have an HTTP server, if you prefer to use the BSD INET D daemon, you can use that. Then that will control what services come up and down. INFS, open LDAP, open VPN. If you have file sharing with Windows, Samba. And the two that I really need are those two, and they're already selected. So. All good there. I don't need any custom fonts. My hardware clock is set to local time. I will set it to central. And then I get a chance to choose my, my choice editor here for what is VI. I can leave it as classic. 
uh, or I can use Vim. Now for me, I learned uh, Unix's VI, so I have shortcuts that will not work in Vim, and Vim has shortcuts which will not work in Classic VI. So I'm going to choose this over Elvis. Elvis is VI, but it doesn't have any UTF-8 support, which if you're doing internationalization or you're working with internationalization uh, files that have UTF-8 characters in it, then you won't be able to read those or, or edit those. So I'm going to put that in. Um, I'm going to default mine to XFCE, and but it will it will provide you the opportunity to switch because they are installed. Uh, there's no password set for root. We need to set one. That can't all be me. It has to be the keyboard too. All right, finally, <laughs> I can now reboot my system. So we're going to go back to the menu now. You can, if you need to reconfigure or you want to go back and check what software that needs to be installed. I'm going to go ahead and exit. I can remove the install this and I'm just going to go ahead and reboot. And this is Lilo. This may snap back. But. So you'll notice right away here that this is just going to push me right into a root, a root prompt. And that's fine because I need to set up some things. So the first thing I want to do is an add user. You can use user add if you want. I just prefer this. And if you don't give it a, a name, it'll ask for you one. So I'm going to put in DJ Ware. I will just do this. Uh, yeah, no expiration date. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm looking for wheel, and there's DJ Ware. It's there, so that's good. The next thing we want to do is a VI sudo. And I'm just going to come down here and uncomment the wheel group. There's root, there's wheel. All right. And then do a right quit. This one controls your default, uh, how the system comes up. Now you'll notice that in three, it's multi-user mode, but it does not start X. So <clears throat> we want to change this to four. <laughs> one time, one time, uh, a friend of mine played a little practical joke on him and changed his to six. So every time he brought up his machine, it would reboot. I'm not sure if that still works or not, but it was pretty funny while he was trying to he was trying to get a control C in fast enough to prevent it. But yeah, I uh, I did save a, uh, a a a USB snapshot for him so he could boot up the USB and fix it. But and I need to go to mirrors and unlock one of them because these are all commented out. <clears throat> so one thing I'm going to show you is that. They're all by country, so you'll want to find one that's closer to you. Um, now, let's see. At the bottom here, you have the current. If you unlock these, this would be like a SID version of the current of, uh, of Slackware. So you may not want to do that. You may not want to unlock those. But I'm going to go over here and find one that's close to me. I don't run FTP protocols on my machine. They're not secure. The command channel sends the password in the clear and now these are all going to be anonymous but I just don't allow FTP protocols on my system at all so I'm looking for one that is closest to me I'm going to assume this one is probably going to be my best choice 
You only want to select one of those. Update GPG. This will bring down the keys that you'll need for this. Uh, and then I can do a Slack update by itself, and this will update all of my files on disk. Now I, I am down, I am using the version that came out on February 3rd, and today is the 28th. So I, it's possible I could have some updates. So let's see if we do. Oh, it's install all or upgrade all. Oh yeah, we do. We have a few. So we'll go ahead and do this. So I think we're good to go here. So let's go ahead and reboot. So yeah, this is going to go into Plasma by default. So, and this is going to be pretty basic. I mean, this is going to look a lot like what the developers want it to be. So let me go into settings here and we'll go down and find displays. I hope. Oh, there it is. And we're going to change this to, I guess I'll go to 14 by 900. It's probably more legible than this. So, yeah, it looks good to me. I will go ahead and keep it. So yeah, it's, <laughs> if you're used to having things configured for you, set up, you know, have the proper theming and all of that, yeah, then Slack's not going to be quite for you. But uh, if you want to, if you want to be able to have the freedom to uh, go around and change things the way you want them to be changed, then yeah, then it's going to be a, it's going to be a very nice thing for you to use. You notice that there's a lot of packages here that, of course, I did install everything. I might even mess around with Tickle and see if I remember how to use it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go, to, I'm going to drop to the command line as usual. And let's see what we got here. I need this to be a little bit bigger. That's kind of an eye chart. Let's see how much disk it's taking. We'll do our usual due diligence here. And we have 5.4 available, 14 gig used. Yeah, so because this installed everything, it's going to be a little heavy. It's going to be a little heavy. Um, as far as memory is concerned, about 552 meg. It's got, I don't know how many packages it has. Let's see. Mm, 1582, quite a few. Quite a few. So let's see. The other thing I want to do is, let's see if we have get. Yes. So I'll go out here to opt. And we'll do, I haven't even tried a sudo yet. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's going to work. So we'll do a sudo get clone. Oh, yeah, why? Okay. Now I should be all right. I haven't I haven't actually gone in and hardened anything yet. So let's just take a look and see how it. Um, do audit system, and we'll see. We're at 308 still. Now let's take a look here at what we got. So it's defaulting at 63. I see already we have a problem. We don't have a firewall installed. Uh, no password set on Lilo bootloader. Reboot of the system most likely needed. No password set for single mode. K log D is not running. So we'll want to add those things. And then we have a lot of suggestions here. Outside of the new ones for Lilo, these all look the same. We have some information exposure and PHP. We're going to get more things in this because 
uh, this has this is uh, pretty complete as far as the number of things that you can install with Linux. So, so where did we end up after getting it installed? Uh, I think if you skip the installation part of this, then let's be specific about some of the things that it will do and what it won't do. First of all, when you're installing Slackware, it's usually recommended that you lay down everything. So that's going to make this a little heavier than you're probably used to. The reason for that is the package manager does not care about what dependencies a particular package has. Further, when you're going to do an update with Slack package updater, then you'll find that it may be updating packages that you didn't install. So if you're going to pick and choose, that's not usually a good idea. However, the setup of the system is left up to you. I mean, they, they don't pre-configure anything. There's no theming that's done for you. I'm going to leave you with my benchmarks uh, today. Uh, I have benchmark Slackware, and I'm putting up the rest of them as well. Fedora, Rocky, Ubuntu, Debian. I'll present those to you at the end. I will tell you a hint. Slackware does quite well in those tests. Uh, and overall, I think it has a number two ranking. Uh, yes, a number two ranking. So not bad for an old, old timer. It, uh, uh, so there is, some, there is some benefit in doing things the old Unix way. And with that comment, I'm going to bail out of here. Hope you enjoyed this. Please stay tuned for the benchmarks and see you next time. Bye for now.